What's up guys, me on back with another video, and we've got ourselves, well, the first of two race reactions to do, Xfinity race now, and then the cup race later. I was not able to do a truck series or cup series reaction to the first race, to the well, first cup race, because I had to work yesterday, so I missed the entirety of the truck race. Congrats to John Hunter Nemechek on getting his fifth win of the season, I believe. Really wanted to see Sheldon Creed come home and win it in the Chaos and Kindness truck, because Chaos and Kindness, the guys that are behind that, are from New Hampshire, so yeah, but got a top five at it, and top three actually. Um, and as far as the other, the first cup race goes, that ending was insane. Congrats to Alex Bowman on getting his third win of the season. Actually, when I got home from work and I put the race on, I came home to Ross Chastain leading and Bo Wallace in the top five, which is freaking awesome. But anyway, so the Xfinity race today, we got some guys making their debuts. Sam Mayer being the biggest one, of course, in the eight car. And a lot of people, there's been a lot of chatter, obviously, because some people are like, oh, Gary should still be on that car. He deserves that car. Did it, did it, whatever. This and that. But we'll see how he does. He's going to race pretty much the rest of the season. Um, So we'll see what happens. So nobody, go, well, nobody went to the rear, at least at first. Harrison Burton and Josh Williams both failed tech twice so they will lose pit selection for road america and then jesse wuji would actually have to go to the back for a driver change which was kind of known um and then riley herbst ended up having to go to the rear final period adjustments augers would report that sam mayer was having a radio issue which we'll get back to later um david star's day looked to be done before it even began he was getting pushed to the garage but they managed to get the car fired and he made it out and he was able to take the first lap with the rest of the uh the cars um, then we get a caution for Josh Williams. He spins, gets into the turn one wall, says the 26 got into him. Replay shows that Williams almost turned um, Ferrucci, and then Williams wrecked. So basically, which is basically exactly what it looked like. So, it, it, yeah, Williams tweeted about it later. Again, we'll get to that later. Um, some of the drivers pitted. Uh, Sieg's team would look under the hood. Obviously, Williams' day was done. Sieg would get a penalty for too many men over the wall. Mason Massey would get a penalty for an uncontrolled tire. Joe Grab Jr. reported that he did not have lift he was didn't have left front brakes, but quote, definitely better than what we had. He was three laps down at that point. And Harrison Burton would take the stage one victory. Uh Danny Harmick second, Justin Algar third, Austin Sindrick fourth, AJ Almaninger fifth, Ty Gibbs sixth, Noah Gregson seventh, Jeb Burton eighth, Justin Haley ninth, and Josh Berry in tenth. Sam Mayer climbed his way up to the top 10, had pitted under the previous caution. So, yeah. Uh, so, we get going with stage two, and we get a uh, caution to come out. Big wreck for Justin Haley. Most of the field missed him. Uh, Ryan Var Vargas was unable to avoid him. Kyle Weatherman got extremely sideways to avoid hitting uh, Haley. And at the same token, uh, uh, Ryan Sieg, who was back there because of the penalty, uh, he got extremely sideways um, trying to avoid Vargas, and luckily both of them did. Uh, now, what happened was they were coming off one of the corners, and it just looked like Mayer was there. Haley might have come up a little bit. Mayer maybe could have backed out of it, but regardless, they were there. They both made contact. Uh, Mayer got on the wall a little bit. Haley also got on the wall. Haley then turned down. And he ended up hitting the inside wall, which was a really hard hit. Um, and the red flag would actually come out because he had to clean it up. Obviously, Vargas would hit Haley. Um, Haley got out of his car and lied down on the ground after, you know, after getting out. He was able to walk out, get up and walk to the ambulance. He would later be checked and released from the infield care center. And in an interview, basically said that he, he basically got the wind knocked out of him. He hadn't had a, that hard of a hit in a while. Uh, but luckily, he was okay. No word yet if he's going to run the 77 car in the Cup Series race in a little while. Um, he is cleared to race, but that's up to Spire Motorsports if they want to make that decision. Uh, so, red flag was lifted. Caution comes out. Ryan Vargas, he gets interviewed after coming out of the care center. And it was a pretty emotional one. It was short, but an emotional. Um, you know, he, he felt hard on himself for what happened. For what has happened this season, you're know, trying to get better and trying to get better finishes. And it was also mentioned that his car chief had recently died. 
So, and this would have been his car chief's home race. So he did not get, obviously doesn't get to see it, which, you know, prayers out to the family. So this meant a, a lot to Ryan. And he damn near cried during his interview. And you couldn't help but feel bad for the guy. I mean, he's an all around awesome dude. And I mean, in that sort of situation, I think a lot of us would feel that way. Um, but, so obviously Haley and Vargas are done for the day. Uh, Jade Buford reported to have an issue. NASCAR would tell him to stay on the access road while coming to pit road, hearing he had a tire down. Caution would come out in turn one. Harrison Burton, underneath Justin Allgaier, he ends up going around and gets into the wall. He manages to not hit Justin Allgaier and manages to not get hit by Austin Sindrick somehow. And that happens. Burton would end up being on pit road with the hood up, and his day would be done. He would climb out of the car. Daniel Hamrick also suffered a speeding penalty under the set of pit stops. And then on the last lap, uh, Blaine Perkins in the 23 gets into Justin Allgaier in the 7 on the last lap um, on Allgaier's inside. Uh, doesn't look like it did a ton of damage, or really didn't at all, but either way. Ty Gibbs would take stage 2, Noah Gregg's in 2nd, Brand uh, Bra yeah, Brandon Jones 3rd, Maya Snyder 4th, Riley Herbst 5th, Austin Cendrick 6th. Uh, Jeff Burton 7th, AJ Almanier 8th, Josh Berry 9th, and Allgaier in 10th. Josh Williams, as I mentioned before, tweeted, Fighting over the same lane, I figured the 26th would run the very bottom, and I guess he thought he was clear to run the second lane. I apologize to all my sponsors, and uh, at EGM Racing, underscore racing, underscore, obviously, uh, game team, uh, team on to the next one. And then we get a caution. Coming out for Riley Herbst. Right beforehand, Ty Gibbs had went up the track and Austin Cedric took the lead. Herbst's day was done. It looked like he might have had contact with the 15, but it's hard to tell. Um, and so then we get going again. Uh, green flag pit stops would begin with Justin Allgaier. Uh, and it would just be a, a chess match for the remainder of the, of the final stage of the race. As far as when people would pit and stuff. Uh, Jimmy Means Racing's Twitter... Announced or reported that transmission issues and it was later reported by Bob Pockers to be clutch issues would end Joey Gase's day. He was in the 52 car. Reportedly, Sam Mayer overshot his pit box and had to be backed up. Mayer would end up going a lap down, but he would recover. Uh, you know, with once Hemrick and a few others would pit, he managed to get his lap back and he would climb all the way back up into the top 20. I think he finished 18th or 19th. He ended up a lap down anyway because Cindric just, you know, because Cindric and Gibbs, but still happened. Hemrick would get a speeding penalty again, so that makes his, his team strategy null and void. Uh, Austin Hill would get a commemorable wall too soon penalty. Bland Perkins would get a penalty for going through too many pit boxes and then got another penalty for servicing the car under a penalty, and he would end up going to the garage not sure why on that. Might have been the reason why they were servicing the car under penalty. Mason Massey would get a speeding penalty. And then David Starr runs out of gas in front of Austin Sindrick with about two or three laps to go. Luckily, nothing happened out of that. I think Starr might have gotten the wall. No caution, though. Sindrick takes the white flag, and he would hold off Ty Gibbs a mid-lap traffic to win at Pocono. And like I mentioned before, Mayer recovers to get a top 20 finish. So, pretty good race. Um, again, I, you know, there's a lot of hype going into it, especially for Mayer. And, uh, by the way, another interesting stat, Riley Herbs, he finished, he ends the basically the first half of the Xfinity Series season, because of course it's shorter than the Cup Series season. He ended it with four top tens this year. Considering that Briscoe took that car to nine wins last year, the drop off is insane. It, it's, I hate to make this comparison, and Dallas Cowboys fans, if you're watching this, please don't come at me. But this kind of felt like the drop-off from Dak Prescott to Andy Dalton last year. And that's no disrespect to both of them. It sucked to, to see Prescott go down with injury, but then again, the team had other issues. So, I mean, well. But anyway, as far as Mayer goes, I think he had a pretty damn good race. Yeah, the Haley incident sucked. And you could call that a rookie mistake. You could call that a racing incident. I think it's a little bit of both. The radio issues obviously did not help, and especially later on with the what happened on Pitt Road. He probably could have finished top 10 or 15, top 10 or 15, if that didn't happen. And had we got a late caution, I think he would have jumped into the top 15 anyway. Um, but I think for his first race, 
all things considered, I think he did pretty well for himself. Again, he got into the top 10 a couple times. He had a couple mistakes. The, again, the radio issues did not help. The Haley wreck didn't, was, you know, it sucked. But he still did pretty well. And I cannot wait to see what happens the rest of the season. Obviously, people are going to be like, oh, you know, Barry should still be in that ride. Shish. It's been one race. Let the man have some time to show. And he shouldn't have to show that he deserved the ride. Because keep in mind, Mayor was going to be in that car anyway. The only reason why Barry and Miguel Pluto for, for like a race or two, the only reason why they were in the eight car for the first half of the season was because Mayer wasn't old enough to run it. He just turned 18 this weekend and thus was allowed to make his debut at Bocono this weekend. So that's really the only reason why Mayer hasn't ran the full season yet. So I think, you know, and again, Barry's got his opportunities. He ran with the 31 for Jordan Anderson today. He probably, he ran in the truck series yesterday, I believe. Um, he's going to make some other Xfinity Series appearances, probably for Jordan Anderson's team. And we'll see what happens. I hope he gets a full-time ride next year. I'd love to see the man get a full-time ride next year. We've seen what he can do. He's won a, he won a race in Martinsville, for crying out loud. Believe me, I understand where I understand where the arguments are coming from. But again, give Mayer a chance. We know what he can do. He's won before. I mean, have we forgotten that he won the truck race at Bristol last year? The, the second Bristol race in the truck series last year. I mean, and he did pretty freaking well for himself. He was leading a lot in that race. He, straight, he did really freaking well, so... I mean, lest we forget that, come on now. So, again, I cannot wait to see what Mayer does the rest of the year. I think he's going to do really well. Hopefully next year he gets a, he can be in the 8 car full time, for the, and we can really see him perform um, under those circumstances, because I think he's got a hell of a future ahead. And, hey, we got to see him running side-by-side -side with Ty Gibbs at one point, so obviously there's a bit of a rivalry there, you know, because those two you know, going back and forth and trading wins in the ARCA series. I know it's kind of taboo to bring up ARCA because it's not what it used to be. Shut up. I'm still bringing it up. End of story. So, with all of that being said, thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts down below. Glad to see that Haley is all right. Again, I will let y'all, obviously, if you'll, you'll find out if Haley's going to run the Cup Series race later or not. I'll obviously mention it during the, the race reaction video later. Well, let's see what happens with the cup race, man. Can Bowman sweep Pocono? Can Larson get back in victory lane? Will we see a different winner this time? One of the other drivers that's got to win? You know, I mean, again, Hamlin, Harvick, they still don't have wins yet. Bubba Wallace and Daniel Suarez did pretty freaking well for themselves yesterday. They could sneak out of nowhere and possibly pull something off. Maybe Reddick, maybe Austin Dillon. There's a lot to look forward to here. Again, Thank y'all for watching. Hope y'all enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts down below. Make sure to use my code ANJJ for free shipping on orders of $20 or more at Circle B Diecast. And I will see you all next time, or later today, actually. Peace.